Comcast. I remember everything. Fourth Matt Damon Bourne movie is still checking if he remembers everything, which he doesn't because these movies keep piling on more backstory that didn't exist before. Highly demanded fourth Jason Bourne film somehow feels the need to open with a drawn out previously on Bourne recap. Jason Bourne's greatest hits, the Clive Owen scene, when he fought that guy, when he did this thing, when he was in the bathroom that one time, when he didn't kill that one dude, when he looked through the scope doing assassin things. In case you confused it for the Greek city of Samantis that is not on the border between Greece and Albania. So it's come to this, Jason Bourne Bloodsport. Would any of these people bet the way they did if they'd seen the wounds on his back? Would the wounds make one more or less inclined to back him? Like, he survived multiple gunshots, must be a hard ass. Or, look how many times this pussy has been shot. What a wimp. Unfortunately, this scene was better in the trailer. Also, even if this is a small time Greek underground fighting circuit, is this really the best way to lay low? I thought this f***er was a ghost who could disappear whenever he wanted. And he's just one punch victorying fools over here in In the News Due to Financial Crisis Greece. I'd remove 25 sins right now if this movie suddenly, without warning, became real still too and he started fighting robots. In case you confused it with some other city with incompatible consonants. Years after she went on the run from the CIA, Nikki is back to her natural hair color because reasons. And also it's Iceland, I guess. You probably didn't know this, but 5% of Iceland's surface is covered in high-end computer server rooms. We introduced this movie's villain via internet article. Also, just the mere hint of a crusty old white dude means this is the movie's primary villain. The Hall of Fame villain roster includes Albert Finney, Chris Cooper, Brian Cox, Scott Glenn, Dick LeBeau, Beau, Keith Richards, and 40 years into the future Channing Tatum. Nikki hacks into the CIA computer, which of course has a folder marked Black Operations right next to the folders that say really evil and not porn. Whoever it is, it's just sitting there idle. And thankfully, my computer just happens to contain a program that visualizes slacker hackers attempting to access our They found a back door. We need the reverse shell. I'm gonna locate the source. And I'm gonna go ahead and award three more sins for this technobabble bull scattered throughout this movie. Right now, she's using that famous software Adobe Criminal Finder CS17. Look at this face. Look at it. She's beautiful, but she's young looking as f And she's supposedly in charge of all the CIA's cyber whatever? Whose daughter is she, eh? Come on, you can tell me. Sir, I'd like to be point on this operation. Despite me being 16 years old, I was actually point on the bringing you this current data mission, so I think that qualifies me. I embedded malware into Parsons' download. You embedded malware into her download, but couldn't stop the download? I'm gonna give you full operational control on this. Even though you're 12. And also because I plan to Pam Landy your ass and wrap this sh around your neck when it goes sour. And you're kind of stupid for not realizing this. In case you confused it for Rome, Georgia. What's that? There is a Rome, Georgia? Oh, f do you think I actually care? In case you confused it for Athens, Georgia. Wait, is this movie f***ing with me? Are all its foreign cities actually parallel to US cities in the state of Georgia? Ah, uh, the Jason Bourne passport. The most useless passport he ever had. And yet, he still hangs on to it. For emotional purposes? Sentimentality? No reason but the viewer's heartstrings? He wins one fight with one punch, but the next fight we see, he's basically even with his opponent. Why? Because we need to buy time for f***ing Nikki to sneak into this arena. Movie fails to Bourne in the first 15 minutes, preferring his boxing career. I don't even know what these underground fights are supposed to be. And how much money he's making, or why he decided to do this above all other things he could do. I get the feeling this is a metaphor for Bourne hitting a low point and essentially doing porn. Bourne porn. The porn ultimatum. Somehow Nikki knows when and where to find Bourne during his illegal underground boxing matches. Sure, she searched the Jean-Claude Van Damme database where Bourne's fight was advertised with full color posters and a schedule. Okay, but which kiosk? Taking a cue from Jack Reacher, is there a kiosk in Syntagma Square that stands out as THE kiosk? And if so, why wouldn't the CIA be able to figure that out as a potential meeting spot? The operation we're about to see will involve two teams on the ground, tons of cameras, researching social media feeds, and their facial recognition software as God. But they'll somehow miss this meeting point for just enough time to matter. You gotta respect a public transit system that stays on schedule even during a riot. Parsons boarded a bus half hour ago headed west across Athens. I know Nikki was just a handler at the CIA, but it seems like she'd be better at disguises and not getting caught on cameras and than she is in this movie. Sir, the asset has landed. Because unlike previous movies, we don't have an asset in the very city is going down in, so he needed to fly it, probably for right attention. We need to move. It's amazing he knows this and she still doesn't, but she stayed underground for like eight years, right? Enhance. Zoom and enhance cliche. What's that got to do with me? Because it matters. It matters. Not Freeze it right there. That is not a goddamn answer, lady. That is vaguely defined. All that matters is staying alive. You get off the grid, survive. By bare knuckle boxing in Greece, apparently. I mean, I can think of a hundred better ways to disappear and stay disappeared and not draw attention to yourself that are better than Underground Boxing League. Jason, I came here because I found something. I found your father's name in the Treadstone files. And I'm risking my life and yours because you just need to know more about the Treadstone program after three movies, which somehow failed to bring up your father at any time. Also, don't you get the sense that Nikki and Bourne could have met in the Underground Fighting Place and it would have been a lot safer than this public bull? I feel like this may be the dumbest meeting place in film history. But you don't know the truth about what they did to you. I came all the way from Iceland to Greece because I really think you need to get more f***ed up in the head by learning even more f***ed up truth about your life. Now, buy me a drink or something? Meet me at the Statue of Athena. Or, hey, wait, 
Maybe back at that underground fighting place? Or my apartment? Or somewhere that's not called the Statue of Athena? Stay with Bourne. Clear to engage the target. If you think about it, this Greek financial riot is a great big super convenience for Bourne. I normally like Paul Greengrass action scenes, I think. But try figuring out what's going on in this one. We got her. Nikki's like the worst at this. Zoom and enhance cliche on remote live feed handheld cameras halfway around the world in real time. AKA some bullshit. A suspect matching Bourne's description has stolen a police motorcycle. You couldn't see that shit on your omnipotent screens? You had to get a report about it? Give me the feed and direct comms to the asset. Well, at least in the last eight years, the CIA has learned how to communicate with their assets in real time other than text messages. I'm accessing Athens police tactical data. But only just now. That information wasn't useful to us prior to this moment, obviously. I need eyes overhead. Bring up the satellites. Another tool that was obviously not useful in this situation prior to this moment. The target will be forced to turn left. That satellite is good. It can see him in real time and predict his route. Why do you even need assets or agents in the field then? Why did you assault Bourne with regular field agents for 10 minutes before using this magic? It's absolutely astounding with all the cops and protesters that Bourne is able to ride this motorcycle through all of it without getting shot or napalmed. Hold on, Nikki. This is the second time a gal has been shot to death while riding in a getaway vehicle with Bourne. However, this time he won't lose sleep over it because it's only Nikki and she was never his girlfriend, at least as far as he can remember. Also, Nikki killed herself, really. She aggressively went after Langley's secrets, then went to deliver them to a known expatriate in Greece during a riot. She knew she was gonna die, let's be honest. This is suicide by information delivery. Luckily, Nikki was holding her flash drive in such a way as to throw it five feet forward when she got shot, so Bourne could not only see it, but actually pick it up without himself getting shot. Bourne, who is in an alley the asset has covered, and CIA helicopters are flying around, manages to disappear anyway through the magic of the movie not giving a f about showing his escape. Your location on Christian Dassault. Yes, sir. If he was working with Nikki Parsons, he will lead us to Jason Bourne. Um, maybe? I mean, wouldn't hurt, I guess. But how likely does he really know where Bourne is or would lead them to him? Does the asset know Bourne? Yep, they have a terrible history together, where Bourne helped a team of 11 thieves steal the Fabergé egg that the asset thought he stole after a series of gymnastics through a security laser grid. He was called the Night Fox then. Again, and this happens a lot in Bourne movies, but the CIA has all these cameras everywhere looking for facial recognition hits on Bourne, but somehow can't find him when he uses mass transit like this. And he's not wearing a disguise. Not only is that stupid, but stupid Bourne walks around in public places without one bit of concern. Gotta love these journals people keep in movies, where they draw helpful pictures to form connections, rather than simply writing, I think Iron Hand has something to do with Treadstone. Looking at this journal somehow triggers a flashback to something Bourne's never thought about before. Bourne sees these numbers and is able to simply type them into a Google search, which gives him the exact coordinates he needs. Now, what kind of bull code is that? Anybody with any kind of spy smarts would be able to figure that out. So why not just write it out like a normal person? Or simply come up with a better secret code? Also, Google is scary. Like, way too scary. If I type these numbers and B-E-R into Google, it only comes up with stuff about this movie. And something about the South Dakota legislature, which has something to do with income tax on banks and financial corporations. So let me just tell you, when you come to Deep Dream, when you use our service, no one will be watching you. Everybody in this place believes this also, not a thing people would standing ovation. Basic app privacy is not so new or revolutionary as to create cheering crowds. A standing ovation because your social media app doesn't share data? The f world is movie living in? Again, characters who would benefit from not meeting in a public place do so anyway. Aaron is a known face to millions of people, and here they risk being heard about their arrangement. There are better ways to do this, right? In case you confused it for Berlin, Georgia. Wait, there actually isn't a Berlin, Georgia? Well, now I'm f***ing confused. I'm glad we could get this guy's entire walk up to his apartment. Gave me great insight into his character. Born. So I guess these guys have crossed paths before, Born and Christian, together again. So I'll call this meeting Born Again Christian. It's what my puns 101 teacher would want. It's an address linked to Christian Dassault. You mean you guys have an address linked to this guy, and you're looking for him, and you didn't think to check what is basically his apartment? There's a phone in the room. The guy who's researching the government and how f***ed up it is decides to keep a cell phone on him that can easily be accessed. I can use it to delete the files. Hacking a phone in a room to delete files from a totally separate computer that is in the same room cliché. You say that's not a cliché? Fine, but is it even possible? Considering how much bullshit he's had to go through the last three movies to learn tidbits of information about his past? This is a godsend of a computer that has all the information possible on it. Bourne has statistically already hit the lottery six times in this movie alone. Ah! T.H. Matt Damon! Ah! Bourne takes a f***ing dumbbell to the face and doesn't have a caved-in face the rest of the movie, or even apparent major damage of any kind. Call him. Dewey wants to call Bourne in order to stall him while Dewey's team moves in to kill him. But honestly, I'm not sure why they even bothered deleting the files or calling him now to alert him to their presence. They could have let him sit there and search those files for as long as he wanted while a team moved in and killed him. Then delete the files, but they decided the best option was being assholes. This nine-year-old CIA boss commits beyond Snowden-level treason in the Situation Room by texting Bourne directly. Also, the fact that no one in this room immediately stands up and says, Sir, text message sent to Bourne detected. It originated in this room. 
You know, it's a great idea. Standing right next to a door when someone you're chasing could run out of it at any minute. No chance for anything bad happening there. Also, the powers that be decide, we'll just put one guy at the exit. What's the point of overkill when we're trying to stop the most lethal assassin in the world? We lost him, sir. But we got that Christian DeSalt guy who was stealing our files and publishing them. So, a bit of a win, I suppose. Or did they forget about that guy in their bloodlust for Bourne? I watched Bourne with those files, desperately looking into his past, and I think he's at a tipping point. Not only is this seven-year-old a tech whiz, she's also a psychiatrist, apparently. If I could get face-to-face -face with him, I think I can bring him back in. There's confidence, then there's thinking you're Jesus. Big gap in between, lady. All the records, even the off-the-books discussions. I'm honestly surprised the off-the-books discussions were ever recorded in the first place. Bourne still eludes the CIA by taking mass transit. I wonder what Bourne's thinking about. I owe somebody five bucks. I thought he was thinking about steak and eggs. Also, movie needs a transition, so here's Bourne on a train having flashbacks. You love it! I mean, two of those flashbacks are literally of him looking at files on a computer a couple hours ago, so how can you not be entertained? In case you confused it with London, England. Yes. This is Jason Bourne. According to the documents Bourne looked at, he entered the Treadstone program in 1998. Kind of amazing this guy who took surveillance photos of Bourne before then still has the same office phone number after nearly 20 years. Bourne just called Smith. And it also went from day to night in zero seconds. Is no one gonna mention that? What makes the CIA think these guys with obvious CIA comms in their ears are subtle? You know, after watching Bourne mess with all these panels to set a whole bunch of fire alarms, I wonder why he didn't just go ahead and prepare this before he called Malcolm. By doing it this way, he has to do it while the CIA is trying to find him after his call tipped them off that he's in London. Unbelievable luck to show up on the scene and three seconds later spot the suspect. Jesus, this five-year-old has incredible eyesight. And Bourne just happens to goddamn spot Heather in the middle of all this fire alarm confusion too. You followed me to Beirut. The last time I saw my father. The problem with Bourne's passionate demand for answers here is I just don't know why he gives at this point. These movies haven't set up anything about Bourne and his father. We didn't even get a flashback sequence of them playing catch in the front yard or anything. We're gonna stop this now. Bourne takes Malcolm's earpiece at just the right moment to hear Dewey say something he has no business saying over the radio right now. Oh, f you. You do not remember that guy being around when your father died. Sorry, you don't. Your brain was not programmed to remember every detail back then. Seems like a strangely convenient place for a wire to be, but mostly I'm concerned with how Jason crashes into this building and survives this. In case you confused it for Las Vegas, Georgia. Yep, still driving that Georgia thing into the ground. Get off my back. Hate to harp on this every time, but now Bourne's at a f***ing airport. Remember earlier in this movie, they basically went all in looking for Nikki's face to show up somewhere, and they were extremely successful doing so. Later, we find out they do get a facial recognition hit, but it takes two freaking hours for it to be reported. Here's this chick having just f***ing landed, doing some hacking to let Bourne through customs, at the exact time he's getting to customs. Convention kiosk leaves extremely useful dark tags for Bourne to steal and use in this movie. They're like little candies in a dish at your grandmother's. And oh look, covert cameras! What a world we live in! In the next shot, Bourne will find a kiosk displaying a dossier that shows what happened to his dad. Also, how is this convention named ExoCon and not Ex Machina Con? Bourne drops the covert camera into Heather's jacket pocket, which will later figure into the plot when her true intentions are exposed. But never once will she put her hand down in that pocket and find the camera. Somehow the asset is only just now arriving, despite both Bourne and Heather taking public and private flights here and arriving way before him. Like, Heather even changed her clothes already. This asset has a terrible travel agent. How is the CIA not noticing or tracking her direct communication with Bourne? In the last movie, they knew Landy was talking to him almost immediately, but here they're just not paying attention? What the f***? Bourne knocks this guy out to get his gun, but won't somebody come looking for him soon? And won't the CIA fear it's Bourne? He had a partner too, so you'd think in five minutes everyone will be looking for Bourne. Ooh, more phony fingerprints. Yet again, I'm left wondering how you take an image of someone's on-file fingerprints and create an actual something that you can leave that same print at a crime scene. This seems impossible to me. I'll take out Kalur and the girl right now. Somehow the asset isn't in position to kill Kalur right now, something I thought would have been easy for him to do with all the time that's passed. But even if he just got here, why didn't he get here way earlier? He doesn't need to synchronize his movements with Dewey. It takes Bourne less than a second to determine where the sniper will be, which is goddamn ludicrous, even for Bourne. Get the cars ready right now! No, take me to the suite. This guy knows what's up, because he read the script and realized he's a bad guy who has a hotel room showdown with Bourne in the finale. And he saw supremacy. This guard can f***ing smell Jason Bourne. Otherwise, his decision to run down this hallway is a f***ing wild guess that magically pays off. And by pays off, I mean gets his ass beat. Hey! Yeah, hey! You might be that guy who just tried to assassinate a Silicon Valley billionaire. Let me see if my hay skills will keep this cordial. Bourne goes to a casino elevator and gets an immediate opening. That's Lucky Rabbit's foot right there. How the f*** did it get to Black Knight so quickly? The last shot I can find with exterior lighting is this one, and it's bright as f*** outside, and nothing about the events we've seen since suggest it took place over three hours. Movie utterly wastes a standoff moment between two of our finest living actors, basing it on, well, the bull that is this movie's plot. Point is, two great actors had a stare down, and it left audiences with the bare minimum of emotions. Bourne suddenly fails at Borning because this movie needs to have its ridiculous Vegas romp. <laughs> 
machina, ex machina. This asshole is actively trying to get away, to escape, yet he chooses to assassinate a f***ing SWAT guy in full view of everyone and then steal the slowest vehicle in a 10 mile radius. Holy f this eye lock between adversaries is impossible as f***ing sh God damn, this is making me angry. FYI, when a SWAT van crashes into a Dodge Challenger at high speeds, nothing of consequence happens. Despite the fact that this would cause mass hysteria on a Las Vegas Boulevard truck full of traffic, this movie's gonna make it seem like Bourne can keep following the asset at high speeds without getting stopped or crashing. I've never wanted to compare this series of movies to The Fast and Furious until now. I don't know what Bourne hopes to accomplish in this car, considering what the SWAT vehicle just did, but he's trying, I guess. That's more than I can say for Ben Affleck in this situation. Bourne survives this, but he especially survives this. Jesus, I've never wanted to compare these movies to Fast and Furious. Oh, I have? Well, carry on. Bourne comes out limping now, so you'll take note that he actually did get hurt, but in the next minute or two, he'll do the Jack Bauer thing, and it'll look like nothing ever happened. Adrenaline, man. These fight scenes these days? Jeez. Were Matt Damon and Vincent Cassell even here on the same day? Just so everyone knows, somebody left a tea kettle down here in the sewers. Bourne never fights in a place that doesn't have improvisational fight props. It's important to note that we're back in Washington, D.C. now, because that means at least a day has gone by since the stuff in Vegas happened. But now we're about to get to a scene where Heather still has that camera in her coat, and Bourne gets to have an extreme ways moment to send us off to the credits. Of course, if you decide that you don't need me, then that's not a problem. There are many other agencies who would want what I know. Blackmail within a job interview. But the people that did that are gone. Until the next Bourne movie invents a whole new white guy to be the guy behind the guy behind the guy behind the guy. I've got my money on John Lithgow. F*** you, Mars. This mustn't register on an emotional level. Physical recovery, six weeks. Full psychological recovery, six months. We're here! We're clear! We don't want any more bears! Heard you had an expensive weekend in Vegas. It's nothing. Forget it. You know, I didn't know. It's not my town. I'm not omniscient. They're fighting, sir. They're breakdance fighting! Where does the FBI weigh in on that as a cooperating witness? What does it say about exposure to airborne contaminants? I've been acting a role. Uh, maybe all my life, of thinking I've, I've done more, accomplished more, produced more than I have. I'd like us to go on a date.